Apple Notes has come a long way from being that little yellow sticky note app that we all ignored. In fact, I'd argue that in 2025, it's one of the most powerful productivity tools that you can use. And the best part is, is that it's completely free. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I use Apple Notes on my iPad to manage projects, staying organized, and yes, actual math right inside the app. And the coolest thing is, is that it all syncs perfectly across my iPhone and my iPad and the Mac. So today we're going to dive deep into 14 features that make Apple Notes so great and how you can get the most out of it. All right, so this first one is actually one of my favorite ones and it's called Quick Notes. Now, imagine that you're on a phone call and you need to jot something down very quickly. Instead of leaving the app that you're currently on, swiping through pages or creating a new note manually, all you have to do is just click the global plus Q on a magic keyboard or function and Q on any other keyboard. And before you know it, a quick note window slides out and you can immediately write what you want. And you don't have to use a keyboard for this. You can use the touch screen as well just by swiping through your screen. Here's how you can set it up. Just go to settings and then go to multitasking and gestures, then turn on swipe finger from corner. Even if you're on a web page, notes will even suggest adding the link automatically. And if an old quick note opens up, just press command plus N to start fresh. For me, quick notes is my go-to for capturing fleeting thoughts or links that I want to revisit later. And once again, you could be on any application on your iPad and you don't have to look for the notes app. You just swipe or use your keyboard and it'll immediately pop up as a quick note. Now, the second thing is for next level organization. You can create folders and subfolders in notes, which is great for keeping work, personal and creative projects separate. And personally, I love nesting subfolders. And you can even collapse and hide folders from the sidebar to keep things neat and focused. Let me give you an example right now. All right, so basically I'm gonna open up my taskbar. And as you see, here are my folders. And let's say I wanna go into YouTube, right? So I click on YouTube and I am in my YouTube folder showing me all the notes that I have saved for YouTube, right? But let's say I want to go into scripts. If I click this arrow next to the YouTube folder, it brings up the subfolder called scripts. And then here are some of the scripts that I have saved. So this is a really nice way of staying organized. Now you might be wondering, how can we add notes to certain folders, right? So let me just show you a quick example right now. So let's say this is the note that I want in a specific folder, right? So I click on the note and then you see the three dots up top, click that, then click move note. And you can literally just choose you know, which one you want it to fall under. But there is another way to save it as well. I can literally just take the note and drag it to whichever folder I want. So YouTube scripts, and when I click scripts, there you go. This is where it is. Very easy. All right, so the third thing is called smart folders, and it's basically automation for your notes. And I'm quite surprised by how many people don't know about this. You see, smart folders let you automatically sort notes by tags. So for instance, if I add a tag like hashtag script, it will automatically appear in the right smart folder. You can filter by date, whether a note has attachments, mentions, or even if it's shared with someone. Sometimes I have these randomest ideas for you know my YouTube videos, and I just quickly jot it down, and I'm not really trying to focus on which folder to put it, I just do hashtag idea and it's automatically stored. And it just basically saves a lot of time from you, you know, doing all this stuff manually when it comes to organizing it in different folders. Now, the fourth one is regarding collaboration. If you work with a team or share projects with family, collaboration in notes is seamless and I use it almost on a daily basis. You can share any note and give others permission to view or edit. I've used this for shared shopping lists, collaborative brainstorming sessions, even video planning with my editor. And in iPadOS 26, collaboration got way smarter. You can now see highlights of what others added since you last checked that note. It works very similar to like Google Docs and in Microsoft Word when you're collaborating with others. And now you can do that with notes as well. All right, so as you can tell by now, one of my favorite things about the iPad is note taking. And thanks to my sponsor, Paperlike, that experience is now on a whole new level. Here is your brand new Paperlike 3, the latest iteration of their screen protector for those like me who want that premium paper feel when writing or drawing on their iPad. It uses the newest evolution of NanoDots technology, delivering that fantastic signature paper feel experience. The texture is great, giving you smooth, consistent resistance with every stroke. And and installation just got a major upgrade as well. With Paperlike 3, you get an all new butterfly application system that is a redesigned method that makes applying your Paperlike way easier, cleaner, and more reliable than ever before. It eliminates dust caused bubbles, misalignment, and unclear instructions. Also, I love that you can just scan the QR code for an interactive on screen guide that walks you through step by step instructions for a seamless installation right on your iPad. 
So if you're serious about note taking or digital art on your iPad and want the best writing or drawing experience out there, Paperlike 3 has you covered. And I have a link to it in the description below. Be sure to check them out. The fifth thing is all about versatility. You see, notes isn't just about text anymore. You can scan documents, images, PDFs, audio recordings, links, and even images generated by Apple's Image Playground AI. And if you're using Apple intelligence in general, you can rewrite text, summarize long notes, or even have it create outlines based on your writing. Let me give you a demo right now. All right, so as you can see my screen, I have some copy for this Instagram real script that I've written, but I wanna kind of spice it up and make it better. So what I can do is just highlight this, click into writing tools, and I can make it sound friendly, professional, or concise or I can just rewrite it or proofread it, right? So let me just rewrite it and see what Apple Intelligence recommends. All right, so as you can see, it kind of rewrote it. I think the flow of this is definitely better than what I wrote, but let's go back into writing tools. And here's the cool part. Everybody knows about, you know, making it friendly, professional, or concise, but now you can use chat GPT as well. So for example, if I go into here and say, make this script sound more engaging, for an Instagram reel, I let it do its magic and voila. Now let's do something a little different. So I have this long list of you know, things about the iPhone Air, right? So if I select this and I go back into writing tools and I say, just summarize this, right? What's really cool is that it then summarizes everything in just a few sentences. So if I was trying to give this script to someone and give someone an idea of what this is about, this would be nice. Or I can just get the key points from this entire review of mine and voila, and I can replace it with it. Of course, I can copy it, but I can replace this whole thing and get it in nice bullet points. This is super duper cool. Now, the next feature is a hidden gem and it's called scan text. And in my opinion, it's one of the simplest but most useful features. So for example, when you're on a note, you click the paper click icon and you click on scan text. And basically it scans your text and the text appears live on your screen. You just tap to insert it into your note. It's super duper cool. I use this for pulling quotes from books or grabbing text for physical handouts when I'm in meetings. The only downside to this, however, is that you have to reactivate the scan scanner for each new text block. Multi-select would make this perfect, but even as it is, it's a major time saver. I know so many people who are constantly just taking images of notes or, or whiteboards and stuff. You don't have to do that. And it'll work seamlessly as it'll extract the text and put it into your notes. With iPadOS 26, search has improved a lot. It now surfaces images, text from scanned documents, and even handwritten notes using on-device machine learning. That is next level. So let's say you scribbled a phone number or wrote a client name last month. Notes will find it even if you have never typed it. And the same thing goes for images as well. If you have an image that has words on it, it'll find that word on that image and show it to you. When using an Apple Pencil, Notes supports shape recognition, quick gestures to erase or select, and handwriting to text conversion that actually works very, very well. And I'm actually quite surprised by how natural it feels, almost like writing on paper, but with all the advantages of digital. You can now share entire folders, not just individual nodes, but entire folders, which is great for ongoing projects. And if you have certain projects that you don't really want people to edit, you can set it as view only and even edit permissions. Perfect if you just want to share information without worrying about someone accidentally changing it. Now, the 12th feature that I'm going to talk about is all regarding privacy. And let's be honest here, we all have sensitive information. You can lock those nodes with Face ID, Touch ID, or a password. So if you're someone who uses their notes app for personal journal entries, financial information, and any confidential work notes, this is a gem. Now, offline access. Yes, so everything I just talked about works offline as well. So even if you're on a plane, your notes are still fully accessible and they'll sync once you reconnect. Now, last but certainly not the least is math notes. And I think this is probably one of the most powerful intelligent features that we've received in a really, really long time. This is where intelligence literally meets productivity. You can literally write or type equations and notes will automatically solve them instantly. And even if you want to change a number, you can do that and the number updates in real time. I just wish I had this when I was, you know, a student back in college because this is amazing for students. But once again, I've also been using it for budgeting as well, like quickly calculating travel costs or adjusting project estimates, 
all without even opening up the calculator app. Now there is one bonus tip that I wanna go over and that's about pinning your favorite note. So me personally, I have a lot of notes that I'm always looking at. Sometimes I have, you know, caption templates and passwords or things that I, I'm always trying to get to every single day. You can pin them. Let me show you how. All right, so as you can see, these are all my pinned notes, right? So these are where all your pinned notes go up all the way up top. So let's just pick anything random. Let's say it's this one right here and I wanna pin it. I just swipe a little to the left and then click pin. And when I do that, it immediately pops up over here. And if I wanna unpin it, do the same thing, unpin. If I wanna pin it, there you go. So in conclusion, these are 14 reasons for why I believe that Apple Notes is one of the most powerful free apps that Apple makes. It's simple when you need it to be, but surprisingly deep when you dig into smart features. If you found this helpful, drop a comment and let me know which feature that you use on a daily basis or a feature that you're excited to try. And if you want more tips like this regarding Apple and iPad and productivity in general, then be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and I'll catch you in the next one.